Maybe your first encounter with the piano was through cartoons. But actually, I don't think I watched any of these cartoons until I was already halfway across the world from where I was from because of the piano. You might know that I have this album coming out and it's my first album in 10 years. And it's really my first album with a label and so I consider this my official debut because I'm not a teenager anymore. <laughs> it means a lot. So thank you to everybody who has already been very enthusiastic about it. The reason I'm making this video is because during the three years that I spent putting this together, I thought a lot about who I am as a person because I knew that this was going to be a very unique milestone and a very important project for me as a person, as an artist, currently in my 20s. <laughs> I wanted to make something really special that's really true to me. So I started asking myself, who is me? I thought a lot about who I am as a person, who I was as a person, as a child, and who I want to become. Trying to find myself also. And this is going to be the first of the series about my piano journey. So let's start from the very, very beginning. I was born in Hong Kong in 1996. Hong Kong and My parents were not musicians. My family to my recollection did not have any musicians in it. Although I was surrounded by music. 24 7 actually even before i was born if i was listening but i mean what else are you supposed to be doing as a fetus and that's largely because of my dad because my dad was a bit of an audiophile he loved music he loved to play all kinds of music in the house and this is the first video i saw from the dv tapes that my mom sent me here in new york it was christmas eve 1999 <laughs> Watching this for the first time a couple weeks ago, I was kind of asking myself, was I a dancer back then? Where did I learn to dance? My parents were not dancers. I don't actually even remember seeing my parents dance, so I don't know where I learned to move like that or where I thought to move like that. But that's kind of the first element that contributed to me becoming a pianist ultimately a couple years down the line. I was a very goofy kid. I did not really know this until I rewatched these tapes. My mom was really the original mommy vlogger. She filmed a lot of home videos long before I understood how filming myself works. And thinking back, yeah, I mean, I love to play pretend. I was surprised at how creative I was just making stuff up all the time. It was fun to pretend that I owned a supermarket with all these products and also cook. Make up my own language. <laughs> Make myself laugh. I was a very funny kid in a way. I would actually goof off a lot more than sometimes my parents would like. Something I actually did forget though is another element that contributed to me being a musician is that apparently I liked to sing. Not that I was any good at it. I was terrible at it. <laughs> and you sit pink. And you sit pink. But I did learn to learn by example at a very early age. So a couple minutes later, I was watching operatic type of singing on the television or on DVD. And then minutes later, I improved dramatically. What was also caught on camera in this particular anecdote I'm telling you about is my extreme emotionality and sensitivity to sounds and to music, particularly strings. I remember that heart-wrenching, uncomfortable feeling in my chest and also kind of my blood, my body just did not feel good. 
and there was this kind of knot inside me whenever I heard some emotional music. And that was actually in this very moment that was caught on camera. I don't think my mother actually ever knew that I was about to cry any second. You could see, I could see that my eyes were about to get teary. That's to say though, that music was really my first contact with the world. I always had this kind of immediate connection to music. I would react very quickly. I would react and dance. I would react and cry. Obviously, I didn't think much of that at the time as a kid, but that stayed with me, that very immediate reaction to music, wanting to do something with the music. Spoiler alert, I never became a dancer, nor did I really attempt to be a dancer. But what I did do is then express that not feeling or whatever feelings I felt inside me through the piano. And it was kind of an outlet for me. I was obsessed with this toy piano. I played a lot of games when I was a child. I would make believe a lot of stories with stuffed animals. But this though was something different. I remember the tingly feeling I felt when the notes matched the sound that I was listening to on the hi-fi system that whatever my dad was playing. This video happened to be Carmen, but I do know that I was playing along to different kinds of music as well. I would spend, I don't know, two hours a day or something playing along to the hi-fi system on just four notes. The chances of that is quite low, but I was obsessed with trying to find that match and just playing, playing. Like it was fun to play with my fingers and make sounds with it. That then somehow became many more keys. I played on this so much that this is actually the second one I have. The one that I have in that video is a different one. It's the original one that was in C major. I think that's somewhere in storage with my parents, but I do have this one. Gotta remember my roots. But my parents were not really pushing or wanting me to be a pianist. I did not feel that when I was a child. But another element that contributed to how I am now as a pianist and what helped me become a pianist was these memory games or rather memory drills. <laughs> I was memorizing philosophical poems as a three-year-old. I do not think this is normal. I think this is the epitome of growing up in a very old school, old school family. <laughs> Did I understand that or think about that philosophically as a three-year-old? I don't know, but I was memorizing poems that today watching them, I do not remember some of these poems. <laughs> but I do remember that feeling of wanting to impress my parents. <laughs> I wanted to be like my parents. Like any kid, you kind of want to copy your parents. For example, my mom was obviously filming a lot with her tape camcorder. My father would read newspapers and read poems and these books, and I would pretend that I knew how to read Chinese characters at age two or three. That drilling set me up to being able to memorize music and absorb music very quickly because I had that memory training. It's the same as, you know, when you have a newborn and you're asking a child, do you remember how to count from one to ten? Like, it's more like that than you must memorize this. But still, it was difficult at times because I didn't connect with the poems, you know? <laughs> but like, I could connect with the music, you know? I have said many times on camera that I did not want to repeat or recite any more poems. But then sometimes I would like to. So it was like this weird mixture where sometimes I felt like memorizing and reciting it to my parents and that was like a great 
achievement feeling that I got. But then there were also moments when I was very upset and did not want to. I felt just really bad whenever I could not memorize it, and there was this nervousness that I felt whenever I. Had to recite poems because I was like, "Oh, would I remember? If I don't remember, then I'm gonna disappoint my parents." And this kind of filial piety and respecting your parents and following your parents' guidance and wishes is very, very strong in an old school Chinese upbringing. So I think around age five was when I got my upright piano. That was. Whole new world for me because it combined the feelings that I got from playing on this little thing here with so many more options. But also, I could feel like I could memorize very easily and feel excited about it independently of everything else around me, whether it was my parents or my school or anything else. I was just in my little world, and it was very, very fun to explore. My parents would quiz me. Sometimes, like, have you memorized this piece or that piece? Ah, 粗兵啊，不如睇得唔得好大声。Contrary to memorizing poems, I was always happy to be absorbing music. I didn't really think of it as a task that I needed to overcome. My hands don't even look at it. It was just very natural to me. Very lucky for the circumstances that made it easy for me. I know it's not always easy for everybody, but that's how it started. So it was a combination of different things, and having that all expressed on the piano, it was a big game for me at the age of five. And、uh, well, I think that's it for this episode. Let me know. What questions you have about my journey from the beginning? I will answer them in the next episodes. I still remember that very tingly feeling, whenever I was playing music that I liked, which was basically all the time. But there were certain pieces that I liked more than others, like Carmen. <laughs> and there is something very mysterious, and that's also why it was fascinating to me as a child. Why the sounds just made my blood kind of tickle, and this very funny feeling that I felt, and it was always this fun outlet and game at the same time. Hope you enjoyed this episode. See you in the next one.